right now on Ag Day. One year ago today, the costiest thunderstorm in recorded history hit the heartland. The powerful August derecho, packing 100 mile per hour winds at times destroying crops, homes and businesses as it traveled east. Good morning, I'm Clinton Griffiths. The massive storm forming in eastern Nebraska and southern South Dakota early in the morning on August 10th, 2020. Later, tearing through central Iowa and points further east all the way to Ohio, traveling over 700 miles in just 14 hours, flattening millions of acres of corn and soybeans along the way. Now, the damage so obvious in cornfields in Iowa, it could be seen from space. You can see the lighter areas of green where corn went down north of Des Moines. Now, one year later, the storm costs are estimated at $7.5 billion and still growing. Farm Journal's Tyne Morgan talked with farmers and crop experts about how things look one year later. Cornfields flattened, grain bins tangled, machine sheds ripped to shreds. Sure, sure caused an awful lot of damage. This was the scene just two days after the derecho hit Iowa on August 10th, 2020. We still had a really pretty nice crop coming, a real nice crop coming, because we had, we had plenty of moisture, which, you know, you go west of here, they didn't have, but, you know, that all, that all changed. The derecho forced winds clocking in at over 100 miles per hour. And as a result, the scene looked more like the aftermath of a massive tornado. I mean, it really went um, from uh, portions of central Iowa clear across into the, the east central Iowa area and, and uh, remnants even made it into Illinois. This QT weather map showing the girth of the gusts. We are estimating that there was probably right around 6 million acres in Iowa that were affected to some degree. Flattened fields that ate in overall yields last year. I would say 25 to 30 uh, percent off the top on the corn, uh, corn yields. Just, just, you know, just because it, the, when the corn was flat, it couldn't finish very well. And then, you know, what, what, you know, the ear loss from being flat on the ground. But today, the crop outlook is better. We, we do have very good stand. It was dry planting conditions and we, we got a very good stand and uh, the crop is, is even and we've applied our fungicide and there's very little disease out there. So, you know. I still think we could have a really good crop with the right weather. Even battling dryness, the overall crop outlook for Iowa this year is promising. And I do think that uh, you get Highway 30 in Iowa and south uh, over into the Illinois-Iowa border. Uh, that area has been blessed with much more beneficial, timely rains all summer. Uh, crop potential is rather large there. As a whole, west to east from where Duratio started to where we're at today. Lick says overall, last year's crop potential in Iowa before the derecho hit was actually better than it is today. You know, before the derecho, we had better yield potential than we're having now is just because the length of time that we had dry conditions in, in the month of June. But as farmers gear up for harvest, some grain bins still haven't been touched. Occasionally, you still see the, the um, occasional grain bin that's crumpled still or um, the concrete pad, but no no bin on it type mentality. Um, so that that will take just a little bit longer to get to. But Lick says despite pandemic problems and rebuilding, most of the devastation has been cleaned up. There's been a lot of rebuilding done in the area, but there's there's still plenty to do. And uh, we're, we're hoping to get all that done before harvest. Even this year, there's one lingering issue from the derecho that he's watching. So the, the biggest scar that we're dealing with in not necessarily this harvest, but um, as we think about this growing season is we still see the, the volunteer corn out there. Volunteer corn like this attracting corn rootworm beetles. And because we've been so dry, um, we think that there still may be some impacts of that coming into the next growing season a little bit. Small issues, but constant reminders as farmers are dealing with the aftermath one year after the derecho damage hit. Reporting for Ag Day, I'm Tyne Morgan. All right, thanks, Tyne. And coming up, the impact of the derecho on one Iowa farmer and how it put the future of his century farm at risk. One year later, Iowa corn is facing some problems.